Please uh, welcome to the stage from the Virginia Tech Mechanical Engineering Romello Lab, Dr. Dennis Hong, Carl Muick, and Robert Mayo. Hey guys, how are you? All right. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for having us. Today we have some really fantastic stuff that I want to show you today, and uh, including our latest humanoid robot design called Darwin. Darwin stands for Dynamic Anthropomorphic Robot with Intelligence. So we are from Romella, the Robotics and Mechanisms Laboratory at Virginia Tech, and we do a lot of exciting research in uh, robot novel robot locomotion strategies, including a passive dynamic robot that's taller than myself wheel leg -like hybrid robots for unstructured environments, and even multi-limb robots that climb, and we also have an amoeba robot that morphs into different shapes. So a couple of years ago, we started a new research program to study human walking, human locomotion for better uh, prosthesis design and for rehabilitation, and we decided to develop a humanoid robot that can generate human-like motions with its human proportions and range of motions. So I put together a team of undergraduate senior students together to do just that. So what you see over here is our initial uh, uh, design study, uh, feasibility study, to see what kind of actuators we can use, what kind of motors we should use, and to see if it's even possible to generate, make these kind of robots. It's trying to stand up over here. Well, it actually looks very impressive, but this one doesn't really need, uses any sensors and no feedback. And as you know, if you don't have any feedback, we know what happens. <laughs> So with our experience, with our feasibility study, the following year, we decided to do the real deal. So now we have Darwin 1. So with the proper mechanical design, and designed for consideration for motion generation, uh, we have kinematical spherical joints, and decided to use LabVIEW real time for its brain. So Carl, could you tell us something more about uh, uh, Darwin's brain? Sure. So as you see, these are some of the front panels that we use uh, to control the robot and to control Darwin. Uh, and on the right is a 3D simulation using 3D picture control, where we actually visualize the motions of our robot, which we then can port directly onto the robot. Fantastic. Thank you, Carl. So with that, now we have Darwin 1. Now Darwin 1 can not only stand up, but now it can even walk. But we believe that Darwin 1 is the very first robot of its kind that can stand up in that kind of fashion without using its upper arms. Very impressive. However, still, as you can see, it's tethered, which means that we're using off-board power and off-board computing. So now we have a fantastic mechanical platform. So in the following year, we developed Darwin 2, or Darwin 2A. And now the fun starts. It's time to add intelligence. So Darwin 2A has two firewire cameras, three rate gyros, three accelerometers, four sensors on the feet, and for its brain, we use a 1.5 gigahertz Pentium M chip on a PC-104 running LabVIEW real time. So my, one of my colleagues from Germany saw Darwin on the web, and he gave me a call. Hey, Dennis, so you guys are developing this robot for RomoCup, right? I thought that, hey, why not? We already have a fantastic platform. Uh, for those who do not know what RoboCup is, uh, RoboCup is an international autonomous robot soccer competition, and now they have this humanoid division. And the goal for RoboCup is by the year 2050, we want these full size humanoid robots play soccer against the human World Cup champions and win. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very ambitious goal. So we decided to give it a try. So two of my graduate students quickly put together a uh, robot soccer autonomous behavior control program with Vision and put it on Darwin 2. So over here you can see Darwin's head now, uh, camera's now mounted on a pan and tilt camera. It recognizes objects so it can track objects when you move it around. And the next video you see is an actual view from Darwin. That's why it's shaking. It's moving around because it's walking. And you can see it's trying to find the orange ball, and when it finds it, it puts its uh, a blue dot over it. Now, the interesting thing is this very impressive piece of software, or software was developed by one student who had absolutely no prior vision experience, only in two hours, using LabVIEW Real Time's vision libraries. So with this, So with this, finally Darwin is ready to play autonomous soccer. As you can see over here, this is our very first autonomous soccer trial. Again, it's not tethered, it's not remotely controlled. It looks around, searches for the wall, walks toward the ball, 
self-localization, looks for the goal, repositions, and it tries to kick the ball into the goal. Goal! <laughs> Fantastic. So with this, our team was the very first team in the United States and the only team in the United States that qualified for Robo Cup Humanoid Division. So Ray, would you like to play a game of soccer against our robot Darwin? Sure, I'll play. Alrighty, come on over here. Okay. So Darwin, Ray, Ray, Darwin. Hi, Darwin. Hi. <laughs> so let me get the ball over here. Oh, take a bow. Yeah. <laughs> So this is the soccer ball. I'll put it over here. Okay. And why did you try to kick the? Uh, hey, it's doing some stretching motion. It's good. <laughs> uh, just a second, Ray. I think there's a problem here. What's that? Uh, size. You know, I don't think it's a fair game. Do you think it's a fair game? What do you think, Darwin's smarter than I am? <laughs> Let's do this. Uh, Robert, could you give me our apparatus? So what we have here is we have. Baby shoes <laughs> attached to the end of two sticks. So why don't you try to use this and try to kick the ball into the goal and see who wins. Good luck. Good luck, Darwin. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. So Darwin actually has many, many talents. And not only can play soccer, but can also play interactive games with human beings. So by the way, to start with, Darwin actually doesn't have any ears. It doesn't have any microphone. So when you want to communicate with Darwin, what we do is we write written commands on a piece of paper and show it to Darwin, and Darwin can actually read. Let me demonstrate. For example, here I wrote handshake on a piece of paper. And if I show it to Darwin, uh, let me show you, this is Darwin 2A and Darwin 2B. Let me just show you how it recognizes the text. So if I actually do it over here, I show it to Darwin. Hello, Darwin. Ah, oh, and you can shake hands. Oh. <laughs> By the way, that sh handshaking motion that, we just, uh, that Darwin just showed was actually sensing the force from my hand. So it's actually uh, following the trajectory of my hand so it can generate a very, very natural motion of a handshake. So now let's try to play a game with Darwin. So I wrote dice. Darwin, would you like to play a game of dice? OK. So we have two dice here. Uh, let's give the orange dice to Darwin. Darwin, here's the, your dice. Oh, you got a two. Oh, my turn. All right. All right. This is too I'll much. use the yellow one, <laughs> <laughs> the red one. Oh, I got a three, Darwin. Who wins? Oh, you lose. I win. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Darwin. So since we are so successful with these Darwin robotic platforms using Labby Real-Time, we decided to use, use uh, Labby Real-Time on a PC-104 uh, board as our standard platform for all of our other robots at Romella. So for example, here we developed a uh, a module that has all the computing, PC-104, and all of our sensors and power distribution, everything on this single board, which is also shock-mounted. So if you want to do experiments on Darwin 1, just plug it in. After you're done, take it out, plug it in Darwin 2A and 2B, and also to all of our other robots that we developed at Romella. As a matter of fact, we brought several of our other robots here from Romella right over there. You can see. Uh, uh, Strider robot, Mars robot, and climbing robot right at that corner over there. And all of those robots use our standard uh, modules using Labia real time. So this is just the beginning. We have a lot of exciting new type of robots coming out of Ro uh, uh, Romella, and I cannot wait to show it to you hopefully next year at NI Week 2008. Yeah, so uh, one other thing that we need to note is that uh, this same group is the winner of the 2007 NI Week paper contest. So congratulations on that Thank as well. You, Ray. And good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <clears throat> that stuff is truly amazing.